Hi, Jared from Visuals by Impulse, and today we're going to go through our trailer and intro templates. I'm going to walk you through exactly what you can get out of these and how easy it is to do it with an After Effects. I'd like to note that the soundtrack is included and that there's a short form and a full form video, so you can use this for a trailer or an intro or anything else that you'd like to use. We'll be going over how to use the video and image placeholders as well as the text and the color selections and also how to insert your logo for the brand. So let's go ahead and open up the directory and you'll see where the full form and the short form are located. Let's open up the full form. After Effects will send this message to you saying that it's from an older version. We did this in order to make it backward compatible. So go ahead and hit OK and it's going to convert the project for you to the latest version. You should notice that the essential graphics panel will open up when you open this template. However, if it doesn't, just go to the window and go to essential graphics panel and make sure that this is open. Inside the essential graphics panel, you'll see that we have the text placeholders here and you can change these text values right here as well as edit their properties and sometimes you want to do that depending on the length and the size of the text this is where you also can change your colors so you can put in another value of color and change it throughout the project and also you'll see in the background here it says add media here that is where our placeholders are so when you open up this folder for placeholders, you'll see there's a logo, a music, and also these are the image slash video placeholders. You'll open these in order to change the media. So for the tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and pull down the footage for this placeholder, and I can do the same for the others. And if you're new to After Effects, the way you get here is you can either go within your scenes and you'll see in here we have the text and the placeholder and double click and it'll bring you into these or you can navigate to them right here within the folder of step two and this will take you directly to those placeholders and you can swap them out here so let's go ahead and see now that that added my footage in the background when i go back to my main composition here and i can also change this text for scene one so text one i'll change it to john and then i can change this so now i've changed the two text values within the essential graphics panel for scene one within this main composition because i have access to it within the essential graphics panel so if i want to i can go into edit properties and i can add some values to be available for me in here and let's click on size adjustment and now i have a controller to where i can change the size of that text so i'm going to make it a little bigger here i'll just do something like 90 uh, and you can also type in so we could say 100 if we wanted to so now this is ready to go i'm good with this scene and now if i want to i can go back over and look at scene two and realize that, oh, my placeholder, I didn't fill that out. So I'll open up that placeholder and I'll drag in the footage and I can open up all of these placeholders if I highlight them all and double click and it'll open all of them up down there at the bottom. So now I can go through and I can plug in my footage and get it how I want it. And one thing to notice is when you have, when you bring your footage down here, you don't need this layer anymore. You can get rid of it or just toggle it off or make sure your footage is on top of it. Now that I've placed all my footage into my placeholders, I can now go back to my main edit and here I can see as I scrub through, I no longer see that add media here because that was visible because there was nothing inside those placeholders. So if I want to change the colors here, I can do so by clicking on the main color and I can change the main color to anything I really want. I'll go with something like that. I can also change these, these elements colors by the element color here and I'll make them something like that. And I can change the main text color. I can change the background text color, the lines, the dots. I can change just about anything I want to. So you can see you have a lot of control with what you really want to achieve here. And I'll go with something a lot lighter here. Let's just have some fun with this. And then you can see that there's these lines that are, they appear dark now, but you could also change them to being white. Uh, you also have this background color, which you could start to give some saturation to and possibly bring that out a little bit and you'll notice as you go through these scenes that sometimes the uh, background colors and such aren't being implemented or just make sure you're using your eye to go through here and check on what every scene looks like together and find something that cohesively works across the board for you we have full control of the light leaks opacity so throughout this video you'll see these these really pretty light leaks that appear uh, and add a lot of character to the the edit and you can essentially eliminate them or you can make them pop even more. And likewise with the dust opacity, we have these nice little specks and dust on the video to give it some character. And also here you can do the same thing with the lines. You can either have them all the way up or you can have them down or somewhere in between. Uh, anything that you find that fits really well for what you're going for. 
Uh, you also have a lot of control here with these colored strips that are along the whole edit. And you can take those away, you can go with something a lot more simple. And same with the elements, you can get rid of the elements or find something in between that works really well. Uh, as well as this dotted grid. So you can eliminate everything and go with something a lot more clean and just use these uh, the text that's on screen. Or you can go ahead and crank it all up and use it all all the way or find something that, that works for you in between. A good practice is to, within the template, try to fit uh, the, the length of what the placeholders are for the text, but you don't have to. So let's say live play is something that I would like to change. I'll make it a lot longer, like great community. And when I do so, you'll see that it goes off the screen. So that's when you're going to go to the properties and I'll go to enable font size adjustment. And then that's when I'll take this down a notch. I'll just make sure that I can fit my entire text within there. And that, that way I can get my message across without having it get cut off. And you'll do the same thing with any of these scenes. If you had something longer and you need to scale this down, you can do so. You'll also notice in here, you can change the font selection as well. So if that's something that you wanna change across the board, you can go in there and you can change these fonts just from within the essential graphics panel. Now back here in placeholders, you'll see the first placeholder is the logo. And then the second placeholder is the music. So if you wanna change the music, go ahead and place your music within here. This is where you'll place your music if you wanna swap it out. Currently, this is yours to use. This is the VBI track that we're giving along with this package and you can go ahead and use this within your edit. Um, but if you wanna change the music, this is where you'll do so. And also with the logo, you uh, don't wanna use our logo. You're gonna to wanna to put your own logo in here. So go ahead and drag your own logo in. Right now, I'll go ahead and just show you that you can put anything in here. So I'll just put a nice circle for now and you'll see that this updates within the template. If you wanna change that, just go into the logo and place it up. You know, you wanna place your logo in a spot that looks really good when you go into the scene. Let's see it. So there you go. And we'll change this to Red Dot. I'm sure there's already a company called Red Dot, but there you go. And since we're Red Dot, let's go ahead and change this back to red. So now that I've branded this out with this new Red Dot brand that I'm creating here, uh, I can take off the light leaks because I'm noticing that the light leaks are changing away from the color that I would like to achieve. So let's go ahead and eliminate the light, the light leaks here. And this looks a lot better for what I'm going for, for this new brand. Um, and if you want to, you can, you can put those back on. Uh, you can change the background color back to something darker. Let's go with this. This is, this is pretty cool. Somewhere in there. So I'll go ahead and render this and we'll check it out. We've just about completed rendering here. And I wanted to mention a few things. Of course, if you want to go into these compositions, if you're advanced, you can change all kinds of things and have control of the entire After Effects project within these compositions. And let's go ahead and take a look at our video now. What I'd also like to show you guys here is we do also have a short form video and this can be used on the top of a video or the end of it. Uh, just something to go ahead and plug your brand more of like an intro. Again, the same message will come up about converting the project since we did make this backward compatible. Go ahead and hit OK and it'll just convert the project. So just like the last project, you'll notice this is all the same. You'll just go into these placeholders to change the placeholder music, the logo or the actual footage and then you'll render it. You'll have the same control within the essential graphics panel with the colors, the opacity settings, as well as the text input. And over here in your placeholders, you have the music and the logo you can swap out as well as the video. Now, once you're happy with your edit and you're ready to export this out, you can go ahead and say file, export, add to render queue. And now here you get to set some settings. You can set it to ProRes 422 or H.264. You can also tell it where to go. You can tell it exactly where you want it to export to. So hit save in the directory that you'd like. And then you can either hit render from here or Q and Adobe Media Encoder. Now, once you've gone to Adobe Media Encoder, you can select from here either H.264 or ProRes or whatever you want. 
and you also have the output file here. And this way you can queue this up in the background and hit the render button. It'll begin to encode. You can see it begins to connect to the dynamic link server and it's just connecting After Effects to Adobe Media Encoder. And now you'll see it starting to render. Likewise over here, you can add this to your queue here and you can even hit render here. So this way you don't have to go through the Adobe Media Encoder. You can just do it right here with an After Effects. And as you'll see, it doesn't need the dynamic link server. It just goes ahead and it renders it right here. But keep in mind, once you're rendering inside of After Effects, you can no longer use After Effects. You'll have to wait for the render to be complete until you can use it again. Once this completes rendering, you'll have your final video, which you can use to put up on YouTube or publish wherever you'd like. So I really hope you get the most out of this and I hope you're able to put this to work for your brand or for your channel and really elevate your stream for your viewers. As always, don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you need any help. That's what we're here for.